Driving at home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. All right, guys, we're here with another week of Driving at Home, and it's a good week to have Dr. Losey on because we just released our August stats. So, Claire, tell us a little bit about what we saw in August and what that means for us as we head towards the fall. So, overall, it was relatively positive news. Sales grew very modestly, about 1% on a year over year basis but still a stark difference from what we've seen over the past several months with a decline in year-over-year sales. Meanwhile, the moderation in the median sales price decreased somewhat. It's measured around 8% on a year-over-year basis in August as opposed to you know, the 10 to 15% that we've seen over the past several months. So overall, fairly positive news. The one headwind that we're really facing is just Of course, the rise in mortgage rates that we saw in August with rates hovering in the low seven range. And so really with that, just questions moving forward about how buyers will react as we move into the fall months and move out of the typically busier spring and summer home buying months. Yeah. And so if I think about when the rates spiked the most, it was sort of end of August into the beginning, early September. So we're not, we may not be seeing the residual effects yet of that kind of more dramatic spike that we saw at the end of August, right? That's correct. Yeah. Generally speaking, it takes about one to two months for the effect of any sort of change in rates to really trickle into the housing market. So we'll see how things pan out moving into September and October. Yeah. What other significant economic reports do you feel like we saw last week? Or what are we looking towards as we're looking at kind of the larger national economy? Right. So CPI came in last week, came in a little bit higher than expected with headline inflation measuring 3.7%. So a little bit elevated relative to the 3.2% year-over-year growth that we saw in July. And meanwhile, core inflation came in at about 4.2%, which was a little bit higher than expected. So overall, the driving factor behind higher-than-expected inflation was really just the increase in oil and gas prices that we saw in August. Overall, we're not expecting that the Federal Reserve will raise rates this Tuesday and Wednesday at its September meeting. However, it could mean that the Federal Reserve will consider raising rates right in its November or December meetings. So as we've talked about it in previous episodes, we expect that they're likely to hold in September. But I think you still believe that there's effort towards the raise probably in later into the fall. Currently, it looks that way. We'll reevaluate once the September meeting minutes are released. But as of the summer, the Fed was definitely indicating that, you know, the FOMC participants were certainly indicating that they saw the target range hovering between 5.5 and 5.75% by the end of the year, which indicates another 25 basis point rate hike. Yeah, yeah. What are we seeing kind of week over week in this week's data? So overall, it was a fairly positive week. Not much of a change in sales per se. We saw about, in in terms of of listings, we saw about a 6.6% increase in active listings, but we saw a larger increase in closed sales. And as we talked about in last week's podcast, we're now in a more apples to apples comparison on a week over week basis, right? We've moved past the effect of that Labor Day holiday looking at our weekly stats. So sales were up, closed leases were up about 54%. So that's a pretty big increase on a week over week basis. But overall, you know, just thinking about the holistic picture, it's really the monthly stats that are kind of giving us the best indication of the market right now. Yeah. As you looked at the monthly stats in our latest release that went out earlier today, what are you seeing in terms of different areas of the region? Is one area outperforming another? And is there something significant that members should be paying attention to? That's a great question. Williamson County continues to outperform the other geographies. Of course, we're capturing our five-county region and then the city of Austin. Right. So Williamson County continues to perform very well. Of course, Bastrop and Caldwell counties are just 
smaller with respect to sales and leasing activity. But overall, we've seen some lag within the city of Austin itself. But looking out kind of, again, towards Williamson County, that's where more growth has occurred. Do you think that lag in Austin is because of the lack of affordability overall and just, Absolutely. you know, yeah, the high Austin, price driving? Right. right. Within the city of Austin is where we're seeing, you know, is where the highest priced homes within the region are concentrated. And really, too, what we saw in our August monthly stats is just that there's been this shift in sales activity among the price cohorts. So now the lowest price homes are seeing a year over year increase in sales activity, whereas the highest, even the mid tier and the highest priced homes are seeing a year over year decline in sales activity. So really what's happening there is that initially when mortgage rates increased, the first folks who were affected were the first time buyers, Mm -hmm. i.e. the would-be buyers of that more affordable inventory, the lowest priced homes. However, now what we're seeing is that amid the higher rate environment, would-be buyers of those even mid-tier and then highest higher priced homes are kind of considering alternative assets or just opting for kind of that buy and hold strategy, i.e. they're just holding on to a property that they, you know, had purchased previously. Yeah. Well, guys, keep digging into the data with us week over week during driving at home. We are looking forward to seeing what happens with the rest of this month, of course, we'll report that out later. But, you know, I relatively positive in terms of the metrics that, that Claire is talking about here and what we're seeing. And we hope that you're experiencing that on the ground as well. And we'll keep reporting out what happens with the Fed this week on next week's Driving at Home. So lots of news next week, I'm sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Claire. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys. 